You can find a lot of pocket pistols on the market, what makes your choice not exactly easy. Each of these guns comes with its own features, so that you cannot just say this one is better, or that one is worse. Instead, you need to decide what is the most important thing for you, be it the size, the concealability, the capacity, or the firepower. To fit your purpose, you should look for a few features. This includes the size, like the overall length, height, and width. The smaller the gun, the easier it is to conceal it and to avoid printing. Check out the description below to find links to the products. Consider dropping a like and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more videos like this. Sig Sauer P365 SAS This is our Sig P365 SAS review. The Sig Sauer P365 is one of the hottest concealed carry guns on the market. The manufacturer wanted to capitalize on that success by introducing their brand new P365 SAS. The variant has some features that differ from the regular P365. On the surface are the controls and the sighting system, but there are also a couple of different minor features. We're going to cover every little detail to see if the Sig Sauer P365 SAS could be the right gun for you. The short slide on this gun is actually less comfortable when you're trying to carry concealed. The reason for this is that the short slide is going to ensure that most of the weight of the gun is above the belt line, and the gun is going to want to tip out away from your body. The gun features extremely low-profile sights, and the controls have been profiled to avoid snagging. This gun is designed to be a snag-free gun and is really optimal for this carrying style. The length is 5.8 inches, the width exactly 1 inch, and the height 4.1 inches. It weighs 17.8 ounces. That said, it might be a little big for most people to pocket. I'm 5.8 feet tall, weigh 160 pounds, and typically wear regular cut jeans. In that pant style, this gun is going to fill up most of my pocket. With the right pocket holster, it can definitely work, but this is something you'll want to take into consideration. Most people will probably be better suited with a smaller gun. The general feel of the Sig P365 SAS is pretty good. It fills the hand nicely and is a small firearm that will work well even with people with larger hands. If you carry the gun inside the waistband, the small circumference might work against you as it forces you to get more of your hand between your body and the gun and therefore a little slower to draw. Beretta 3032 Tomcat The 3032 Tomcat is a unique Beretta firearm with its most notable feature being the ability to tip up the barrel and place a round in the chamber or unload the pistol without having to rack the slide. This has set it apart from most of its 32 ACP competitors, though it's a simple blowback design chambered in 32 ACP, also known as 762 Browning. This covered version sets itself apart with its threaded barrel, which was designed to accept a suppressor. You could also add a compensator of some sort, but this gun is really designed to work suppressed. The length is 4.92 inches, its width 1.1 inches, and its height 3.7 inches. Unloaded, it weighs 14.5 ounces. It has a capacity of 7 plus 1. You can also buy ProMag extended magazines, although this is not something I would suggest because their reliability has been reported to be inconsistent. The most notable feature, as we mentioned earlier, is the threaded barrel that allows you to mount a suppressor to the gun. This barrel, although it lifts up and down, is a fixed barrel design. Because the barrel doesn't move when firing, the gun is exceptionally accurate from a mechanical standpoint. It also makes for a great suppressor host as the suppressor is unlikely to affect reliability. The controls of the Beretta 3032 are a little bit different from most other guns out there. Most of that difference is going to be in the magazine release. The trigger itself is double action slash single action, and you can use the safety in both modes. However, if you plan to use this in double action mode with the safety, this hammer is not easy to decock. There is no decocker on the gun, so you have to manually decock the hammer. Ruger LCP2 Ruger had great commercial success with the LCP when it became one of the most popular concealed carry firearms. While it's essentially an updated kel P3 at, Ruger took that design and made it popular across the entire market. It became one of the most popular pocket pistols almost overnight. This is not a gun you're going to take to the range to shoot for fun. It's very small, compact, and designed for concealment. Concerning the size of this gun, it isn't easy to shoot, and it's 380 ACP. It's not exactly what you call potent. This gun is going to be excellent for certain niche circumstances. 
If you carry a gun without a belt in situations like working out, this gun will work well for regular or appendix IE to be inside waistband. Carry. Its small size and lightweight make it optimal for those roles. Its length stands at 5.17 inches, its width at 0.75 inches, and its height at 3.71 inches. It weighs only 10.6 ounces. The Ruger LCP guy isn't going to cause much sag in your pants when you're carrying it without a belt. Pocket carry is going to be the most common form of concealment for people carrying the Ruger LCP guy. It's very small and will easily fit into a front or back pocket. I would never suggest carrying in a back pocket just due to discomfort from sitting down on it and that position being harder to protect. Somebody could much more easily grab a gun out of your back pocket easier than they could in the front, just like it's easier to pickpocket a wallet from the rear rather than your front. Remington RM380 Remington Arms Company celebrated its bicentennial in 2016, and that same year, the company introduced the subcompact RM380 semi-auto pistol. Affordably priced and easy to conceal, the RM380 was an ideal choice for the nation's growing number of concealed carry permit holders estimated at 13 million in 2015. I really wasn't impressed at first. Yes, Remington staff told us their new pistol was small, a micro, as they called it. But when I got my first look at the new semi-automatic pistol, all I could think was, this baby boy is tiny. The length of this gun is 5.27 inches, its width 0.95 inches, and its height 3.86 inches. It weighs 12.2 ounces, palm-sized. Sure, that meant great concealability, and certainly Remington made the RM380 for the concealed carry market. Functionally, it's the same as the previous model. A hammer-fired, double-action only, single-stack, 380 that's compact enough to conceal under the lightest clothing, and it retains the double-recoil spring design, which helps reduce the force required to operate the slide. A major selling point for many people, no mouse gun is fun to shoot but the RM380's added thickness fills the hand, which reduces felt recoil and makes emptying a few mags at the range more than tolerable. You'll need to practice with that trigger. As far as accuracy is concerned, you needn't be. Concerned, that is. With its fixed, low-profile, snag-free sights, the RM380 delivers minute of bad guy good terminal ballistics, which is all you need in a pocket gun. Seacamp LOUS380 in the early 1970s, the Gun Control Act had left the pocket pistol market in a quandary. Good, imported pistols were banned and the response was a flood of American pistols that had none of the reliability or finesse of those imported guns. Ludwig Seacamp responded to this with his l 25 chambered in 25 auto. It had the quality levels of those European guns, but was made for practical defensive shooting in mind. It was a hit and soon accompanied by variants chambered in 32 ACP and 380 ACP, but demand soon overtook the limited supply runs, and there were year-long waits just to get a Seacamp. Despite the march of bigger names into the pocket gun market, Seacamp's pistols are still in high demand, though the 32 and 380 pistols are still in production and are more prevalent, I opted for the original 25, Seacamp's original pistol, and one of the last quarter bores still being produced. Seacamp are meant to be used up close and personal which is where the majority of close encounters of the worst kind occur. Nevertheless, C-Camps in all three calibers produce respectable groups at up to seven yards, which is way beyond the distance at which the majority of deadly attacks occur. The LFUS 380 is one of the smallest 380 ACP semi-autos on the market, and the LDS 32 is one of the smallest 32 ACP semi-autos on the market. Despite this, all of my C-Camps are natural pointers, and fit my medium-sized hand just fine. It has a length of 4.24 inches, a width of 0.91 inches, and a height of 3.25 inches. It weighs 13.65 ounces, making them an excellent choice for pocket carry. There you have it, guys. Now it is up to you to make your choice. So you next time, and until then, have fun.